Thanks, Phil. Good morning, London. It's three minutes after 7 o'clock, 7.03. London's weather today says a sunny start will give way to cloudy skies this afternoon and showers. We'll see a high of 9 degrees Celsius, 48 Fahrenheit. I'm Bob Stewart. This is Ry Cooter. Alan Steinman. Oh, hello, Mother. I can't have him stay at my place. Looking for a job? Lewis? Listen, Mother, I've, I've, I've got an important dinner party tomorrow night. Melanie's father's going to be there, and he's bringing this important American... Have you come to join me for a party? Yes, Mother. What, now? Yes, all right. Yes, I'm going to pick him up, all right? Yeah, bye. Ugh. That's all I need. A crazy cousin from the country. Oh! Please change, Gav. No. Back off, then. Fuck you. Well, fuck you, too. Faldo, you're a nice dog and a good friend of mine. But if you hadn't insisted on eating all those pancakes, we wouldn't have missed our train. Lewis, what the hell are you doing here? It's Faldo's fault. I told him. I've been waiting down at the station for two hours for you. Who the hell's Faldo? He's my dog. But don't worry, he won't bother you. Listen, cousin. We're going to have to spend some time together, you and me. Try not to get on my nerves. He's always like this with strangers because he's a little bit shy. But he's a nice guy once you get to know him a little bit better. Wipe your feet before you go inside. Last time I saw you was when you were kicked out of school. What have you been doing since then? Different things. Nothing in particular. But I do love cooking. I want to become a chef in a restaurant. What, just like that? You need training, qualifications, work experience. You won't get anywhere. You should try some of my pasta with mushrooms and king prawns. Pure poetry. You're a dreamer, Lewis. because he doesn't eat the right food. That's why he's so critical. You don't eat the right food, you don't have a good digestion. You don't have a good digestion, you don't go to the toilet enough, and everything gets stuck inside you. Italians love to sip a cup of cappuccino. Oh, shit. <sighs> Look, can you please stop making that noise? I have to finish my article. Good morning, my dear cousin. Pardon me, but I love singing in the morning. It puts me in the right mood. Yeah, well, I don't have time to... Not really going for a job dress like that, are you? What? You don't like it? But it brings out the colour of my eyes. Alan Steinman. Down, Faldo, down. Yeah, that's you right. You ruined my clothes. So you didn't like my review. How did you get my number? Yeah, yeah, hang on. Can I just say that if you hadn't been so arrogant to assume that people would be interested in the banal load of pompous crap that I was subjected to the other... I've got another call. I'm hanging up. Oh. Alan Steinman. Oh, hello, darling. 
No, of course I didn't forget about tonight. No, I won't be late. Uh, but, but listen, darling, something's come up. I'm going to have to bring my cousin Lewis along. You know, I've spoken about him. Yeah, that's him. Uh, yeah, yeah, what can I do? I can't leave him here. Hello? A suit. He doesn't even have a proper suit. Bow wow. Bow wow. <laughs> Darling, why are you so late? I've been terribly worried. Yeah. The children have already gone to bed. Bow wow. Bow wow. <laughs> ah, you're going to a fancy dress party as a penguin. Get dressed. We're going to a dinner party. Dinner party? A penguin suit? Do you understand all this, Valdo? Listen, Lewis. Tonight is very important for me. The father of my fiancé is about to open a new film review magazine and needs an executive editor. You know what that could mean for me? So could you, just for a couple of hours, forget your dog and try and behave like a normal person? You have nothing to worry about. Right, Faldo? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Perfect fit. Oh, Jesus. Now what am I going to do? You can't come along dressed like that. Do you have a needle and thread? Oh, well, yeah, in my room. But no, you'll only make it worse. Don't worry. Give me two minutes. to spend the weekend in the Havana or would you like to see the Caribbean shore da, 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 to where the night and the music is tropical you hurry back to your office on Monday but it won't be the same anymore where the stars are dancing rumbas in the sky ya, 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 ya. How do you manage that? For you, I'll do anything. Darling, will you marry me? <laughs> if I get this job tonight, I'm all yours. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Remember, Lewis, just talk if you're questioned, OK? And remember, Faldo, just bark if you're questioned, OK? Hello, darling. You look lovely. Oh, uh, this is my cousin, Louis. Enchanté. Pleased to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Do come in. Forget about the wang wall. I want to talk about this magazine you oh, It's early days for me. Yeah. <laughs> you just taken it over. And I've got a lot to Father, sort out. Father, well, Mr. Yeah. Garrett, you already know my fiancé, Alan. Hi. He's brought Hi. his cousin Lewis with him. Hello. Nice to see you. I love you, young guys. Find yourself the right girl and you're all set up, eh? <laughs> and you're the cousin, eh? Come to see if Melanie's got a sister? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just go and get myself a drink. Excuse me, please. You know, I used to know her when she was about so high. <laughs> yeah, you have grown. Sure have. Congratulations, Walter. Even uh, whenever you can get away from your little film critic here, you want to come and see me in Dallas. Show you how we have a good time <laughs> over there. <laughs> I think we're ready now. Would you like to bring your drinks with you? Yes, my love. I'm starving. Yes, so am I. <laughs> I know. I don't like this either. Alan may be a bit of an asshole sometimes, but he's nothing compared to that stupid yank. I never had such a wonderful dinner in my whole life. And you, Princess, just a cherry on the pie. I propose a toast to Mel, the flower of rare beauty. Here's looking at you, kid. Shut up. Dear Walter, so at last, you got yourself a son. 
I heard you were planning to set him on your new magazine. You reckon he can handle that? It's not with our brains. With a little help. Maybe he'll end up a good editor. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. I really appreciate... You know, these young fellas, they think they can do everything. And yet they cry like wimps when they fall flat in their asses. Well, at least my little princess is marrying a rich man. <laughs> Won't have to worry about ending up like Cinderella. <laughs> if you have any problems now, you just call on your Uncle James, yeah? I'll sort it out. So, Mr. Garrett, I've heard you're the king of publishers. You bet I am. Some more wine, Lewis. I've also heard you're the son of Alfred Garrett, the multimillionaire press baron who actually created all that wealth you're living off. And what's that supposed to mean? Uh, not much. Not to a pompous, egotistical slime ball like you. I think it's time for you to take a break. Why don't you get the hell out of here? No, no. I'd rather spend the entire evening listening to the very oh. interesting things you have to say. Unfortunately, my dog here under the table is getting a little bit nervous, so I think I'd better take him out before he... No, Faldo, don't! I know you like Mr. Garrett, but I'm Faldo! Oh, dear. I'm... I'm really sorry. I... Uh... I don't, um... No. Uh, what the hell? What do I have to apologize for? I'm only sorry the dog didn't piss on your leg. Melanie? Maybe I'll just drown myself. Only I'm taking you with me to hold me down. Oh, asshole. We're so full of alcohol, the poor fish will all have a hangover by tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's funny. I lost everything I ever wanted tonight. I don't really care. You should get yourself a dog. Yeah. Hey, Faldo, Faldo, come on, boy. You don't give a fuck about anything, do you? Remember the story Aunt Elise used to tell us? About the prince who had a beautiful tortoise that he kept in a muddy pond in one of his parks. But unhappy about the tortoise being so far away, he wanted it next to him in the palace. So he had it stuffed and placed in a box decorated with silk and brocade. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Would you rather be stuffed in the palace or alive in the mud? <laughs> 